Good evening, guys. How are you all? Good evening. Good evening. Am I audible and am I visible to all of you? Very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. Chalo, let us start now. So yesterday we were discussing regarding uh, pseudomonas, right? So yesterday we were discussing regarding the pseudomonas infections. So I told you to remember this mnemonic pseudomonas and you will get all these important things. Now, by the way, tell me what is this infection here called as? What is this infection over here, guys? Any idea? What is this infection over here? What do you call this infection as? Yeah. Those who attended yesterday, all of you guys attended yesterday. <laughs> so this infection over here is your ectima gangrenosum. You forgot? Ectima gangrenosum. Yesterday I told you, you remember? Ectima gangrenosum. <clears throat> right? So now what we shall be doing is that we shall discuss what are the different types of diarrhea. Okay, so basically you guys know there are two important types of diarrhea. Okay, one is called as watery diarrhea. Another one is called as bloody diarrhea. Okay, so what are the causes of watery diarrhea? There are three most important causes of watery diarrhea. There can be bacterial cause, there can be viral cause, there can be protozoa that are causing this uh, diarrhea. Now when it is bacterial cause, can anyone tell me just one bacteria which causes bloody diarrhea? A watery diarrhea, sorry. Any one bacteria which causes watery diarrhea. Any idea, anyone? <laughs> Karan, Ritika, Nishoka. Very good. Vibrio cholera. Bacillus cereus. Bacillus cereus causes watery diarrhea. Very good, Nidhi Jain. Right? So, how do you remember this? How do you remember this is that? Just remember by this mnemonic over here. Okay? For example, let us say you are sitting in a room nearby the window. There is watery diarrhea coming from the upstairs. Let us say there is rain falling. Okay? Not diarrhea. There is rain that is falling now. Now, whenever it is raining, okay? Whenever it is raining, basically... So what do you do? You tell you tell the person to close the window. Now, how do you tell the person to close the window? So tell him, excuse, please close the window, right? So you would tell, excuse me, please close the window. Now, what do you mean by excuse me? Excuse me in the sense E, e stands for E. coli. E stands for E. coli. Okay, so what type of E. coli is this? Enterotoxigenic E. coli. Enterotoxigenic E. coli. Next important thing is, next important thing is, here, close, C-L-O. What does C-L-O stands for? Clostridium difficile. Clostridium Clostridium difficile. Okay, in the same way, uh, there is PLE. What does PLE stands for? Perfringes. Okay. What does PLE stands for? Perfringes. Clostridium perfringes. Clostridium perfringes. And finally, window is WI, but VI in the sense Vibrio cholera. VI in the sense Vibrio cholera. So these are the main organisms which causes what? Which causes watery diarrhea. Now, uh, in E. coli, you remember in E. coli yesterday we discussed hit three important things H, I, T. You remember these things? H stands for enterohemorrhagic E. coli. I stands for entero, entero what? Any idea? 
वेरी गुड एंटीरो इनवेसिव इकोलाई एंड टी स्टैंड्स पर एंटीरो टॉक्सिजेनिक इकोलाई राइट नाउ आउट ऑफ दिस थ्री वी डिस्कस दैट एंटीरो टॉक्सिजेनिक इकोलाई कॉजेस वाटरी डायरिया यू रिमेंबर एंटीरो हेमोरेजिक कॉजेस ब्लेडी डायरिया एंड एंटीरो इनवेसिव आल्सो कॉजेस ब्लेडी डायरिया राइट सो दिस इज एंटीरो टॉक्सिजेनिक इकोलाई now this enterotoxigenic e coli releases two different types of toxins what are the two different types of toxins that are released one is stable to heat okay one is not stable to heat so that is called as one is heat stable toxin one is a heat liable toxin okay so one is heat stable toxin heat stable toxin another one is heat liable toxin so there are two important toxins one is called as heat stable another one is called as heat liable toxin okay now coming to clostridium difficile in clostridium difficile there are two important toxins that are released in the starting when i was teaching you clostridium species all the clostridial species i taught you tetanus botulinum and all there itself i told you clostridium difficile releases two important toxins one is called as toxin a another one is called as toxin b if you remember one is called as toxin a and the other one is called as what toxin b you remember this right now next important thing is that uh, when it comes to clostridium perfringens clostridium perfringens also releases two toxins what did i tell you perfringens will perforate what is that toxin alpha toxin you remember alpha toxin another toxin is heat liable enterotoxin heat liable enterotoxin heat liable enterotoxin and finally vibrio cholera releases cholera toxin cholera toxin is having how many subunits you remember that cholera toxin is having two subunits subunit a subunit b right so these were the things we discussed yesterday so overall these are the important points which you have to know like what are the different kinds of toxins that are released this is very 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 important okay heat liable enterotoxin alpha toxin and all so these are the important toxins which you have to know now another important thing you need to know here is that what is this important thing toxin a is called as enterotoxin enterotoxin and toxin b is called as cytotoxin is called as cytotoxin toxin a is called enterotoxin toxin b is called cytotoxin so all these bacteria over here are causing what watery diarrhea okay so if e coli especially etec enterotoxigenic e coli if that is causing watery diarrhea what kind of diarrhea you call this as this is called as travelers diarrhea this is called as travelers diarrhea what is this this is called as sorry this is called as travelers diarrhea in the same way clostridium difficile causes what and by the way tell me clostridium difficile long back itself i told you clostridium tetanae will cause what clostridium botulinum will cause what 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 is caused by clostridium perfringens difficile all the things the list i have given you tell me clostridium difficile causes what very good nidhi jain clostridium difficile causes pseudo membranous colitis very good it causes pseudo membranous colitis so which is also called as pmc pseudo membranous colitis now when it comes to clostridium perfringens clostridium perfringens causes what any idea you remember there i have told you clostridium perfringens causes what what does clostridium perfringens cause very good so clostridium perfringens causes gas gangrene it causes gas gangrene okay it causes gas gangrene and finally vibrio cholera causes cholera so these are the things which you already know okay so this is one very important mcq part which you have to remember okay now let us see what are the viruses that are causing watery diarrhea what are the viruses that are causing watery diarrhea so how do you remember is that remember by the mnemonic nora n o r a nora 
Okay, remember by this mnemonic. Okay, now what does N here stands for? NO stands for norovirus. N here stands for what? N here stands for norovirus. Next, R stands for rotavirus. Rotavirus. So, NO stands for norovirus, R stands for rotavirus, and A stands for adenovirus. 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 So, these are the three important viruses that cause watery diarrhea. Okay. Now, out of these three important viruses, which is the most common? The most common cause of watery diarrhea is norovirus. Keep this thing in mind. Okay. Most common cause is um, norovirus. Now, if I ask you what is the most common virus that is causing diarrhea in children, what will you tell me? Most common in children is most common in children is what? Rotavirus. Rotavirus is most common in children. Okay. So till here you need to remember. Now, when it comes to protozoa, so see here, bacteria is finished, virus is finished, now protozoans. When it comes to protozoa, Within the protozoa, there are two important protozoans that causes diarrhea. One is called as gyardia. Complete name is gyardia lamblia. Another one is cryptosporidia. Cryptosporidia. Another one is cryptosporidia. Okay. So gyardia lamblia and cryptosporidia, the two organisms which causes diarrhea, watery diarrhea in case of protozoans. Now, one very important thing you need to remember is that when if if they wanted to ask a question on gyardia lamblia, you know how they will ask? How they will ask you is that they will give you a history that this patient, this patient went on a hiking. Okay. This patient went on a hiking. Or they might also tell you this way, patient went for a camping, right? Now, after returning from this hiking or camping, this patient had uh, abdominal pain, abdominal pain, bloating, and very, very, very foul smelling stool. What is that? This is a very foul smelling stool. So, they will tell that patient went on a hiking or camping. And after that, he had got diarrhea and this is a very, very foul smelling diarrhea. So if that condition, if you see here, right, then it is most commonly Gyardia lamblia. Clear all of you? This most commonly it will be Gyardia lamblia. Now, we are, we are discussing about Cryptosporidia. Okay. Now, in Cryptosporidia, you need to remember C stands for Cryptosporidia. C also stands for Cholangitis. C also stands for cholangitis. C also stands for cholecystitis. Cholecystitis. C also stands for cholangitis. C also stands for cholecystitis. All of you know what is cholangitis and cholecystitis, guys? Yes or no? So, the inflammation of the ducts at the same time, the inflammation of the gallbladder. Okay? So, that is caused by this cryptosporidia. So, I think this is just a memory part which you need to remember. And I think uh, this is very important thing uh, regarding this watery diarrhea and all. All of you understood till here. There is nothing to understand. This is just to remember this. Okay. This is just a memory part which you have to remember. All of you are clear till here? Everyone? <clears throat> very good. Simultaneously, you guys are also making the notes or you will make the notes later on. Once after apply or upload the video. We are making the notes. Right. Now, now after the discussion of watery diarrhea is done, let us discuss bloody diarrhea. Now, when I'm telling bloody diarrhea, first thing that should come into your mind is E. coli. Does E. coli cause bloody diarrhea? Yes. In E. coli, there are three important strains that is called as a hit, HIT. Right. Enterohemorrhagic E. coli, enteroinvasive E. coli, enterotoxigenic E. coli. Already we discussed enterotoxigenic E. coli is causing watery diarrhea. Then the remaining two will cause what? Bloody diarrhea. Enterohemorrhagic and enteroinvasive will cause bloody diarrhea. So within this bloody diarrhea, just give me a minute. 
Just give me a second. Give me a second, guys. Just give me a second. I think I have switched the PDF. Right, so till here you understood that this causes, there are two important strains that cause diarrhea over here, enterotoxigenic, another one is enteroinvasive, right? Right. So I think we are good to go. <clears throat> so regarding this bloody diarrhea, regarding this bloody diarrhea, regarding this bloody diarrhea, first important point, what is the first important point I have to tell you regarding this bloody diarrhea, guys? First important is E. coli. Within this E. coli, there are two important strains within this E. coli, as I told you, right? One is called as enteroinvasive E. coli. Another one is called as enterohemorrhagic E. coli. Where is the enterotoxigenic E. coli? You already know that enterotoxigenic E. coli will cause watery diarrhea, not bloody diarrhea. Okay. Now, within this enterohemorrhagic E. coli, if you still remember yesterday's class, within this enterohemorrhagic E. coli, I told you there is a variant called O157H7. You remember this? I told you to remember this is very, very important. So O157H7 is very, very, very important because this is responsible for causing HUS. What is this HUS? Anyone can abbreviate it for me. What is this HUS? Yes, be fast. Be fast. HUS is what? Very good, Nishoka. Very good, Nidhi Jain. HUS is hemolytic uremic syndrome. HUS is what? Hemolytic uremic syndrome. We also discussed the triad of this hemolytic uremic syndrome, right? Very, very important. Very, very important for your medicine point of view also. Right. So tell me what are the other organisms? What are the other organisms like other bacteria which causes this bloody diarrhea? So, bloody diarrhea is caused by other organisms. How do you remember this is that? Let us say there is a girl by name Yersinia. Okay, there is a Russian girl by name Yersinia. So, Yersinia is very shy. Why? Because she doesn't want, she cannot come to camp. You, you arranged a fire camp and Yersinia, Russian girl, she is very shy to come to a camp. Right? Now, what does Ersenia stands for? Ersenia stands for Ersenia enterocolitica. Enterocolitica. Ersenia enterocolitica. Okay. So this is one organism which causes bloody diarrhea. Next, what is mean by shy? Shy in the sense shigella. Shigella or shigella. Shy in the sense shigella. Okay. So shigella is also an organism that will cause what? Bloody diarrhea. Now, can you tell any few important points on Shigella? 
Shigella releases cholera, Vibrio cholera releases a toxin called cholera toxin. In the same way, Shigella releases a toxin called a Shiga toxin. What is the toxin that it is releasing? It is releasing Shiga toxin. Okay, it releases a toxin called Shiga toxin. Second important thing is that even even low dose of Shiga toxin, okay, even if you are taking low dose of Shiga toxin also, that is very, very infectious, okay. So, even low dose of Shiga toxin is also very infectious, okay. Now, the type of disease that is caused here in Shigella is called as bacillar dysentery. What is the name of the disease? You call it as bacillary dysentery bacillary dysentery okay so what is bacillary dysentery bacillary dysentery is mainly caused by shigella and in shigella what kind of diarrhea you see you see bloody diarrhea over here so i hope till here all of you are clear next third important thing what is the third important thing you need to know uh she cannot come to the camp what okay she cannot not in the sense what not in the sense non-typhoidal salmonella there is there are two types of salmonella one is called as typhoidal salmonella another one is called as non typhoidal salmonella non typhoidal salmonella will cause a disease called as salmonellosis salmonellosis okay which eventually causes bloody diarrhea clear next fourth important thing what is the fourth important thing she cannot come where she cannot come to the camp what is CAMP? CAMP stands for Campylobacter jejuni. You remember that? CAMP stands for Campylobacter jejuni. Campylobacter jejuni. Okay. Now, can you tell me few important points regarding this Campylobacter jejuni? This Campylobacter jejuni grows at how much degrees? It grows at 37 to 42 degrees centigrade. At this temperature only, this bacteria starts growing. Second important point is that this bacteria has a higher chance, higher risk of causing GBS syndrome. Can anyone tell what is GBS syndrome? Any idea, guys? What do you mean by GBS syndrome? Yes? Very good. Very good. GBS syndrome stands for guillain barry syndrome. guillain barry syndrome. I'm sorry if the spelling is wrong. But GBS syndrome stands for guillain barry syndrome or guillain barry syndrome, whatever it is. Okay. So, which bacteria is associated with guillain barry syndrome? What will you tell? It is Campylobacter jejuni. Now, I'm telling you this association is very, very important. Okay. This association is very important. Most of the time, they ask you this question. Okay. So, till here, all of you are clear? Yes or no? Tell me very fast. Be fast. Now, I am going to teach you another important topic, guys. This From this topic, which I will be teaching you, 100% one question will come. And I will make you to practice a lot of x-rays within the class. So, in the class today, in the class today, you will be perfect with x-rays. Okay? Any TB patient is coming to you with an X-ray, definitely you will diagnose and tell that he's having a TB. So we shall uh, go in that approach and discuss the things. Okay. Now, after this diarrhea, the next important thing is tuberculosis. Okay. Tuberculosis. Now, coming to this tuberculosis, so far, what questions are asked from the tuberculosis is that mostly they ask you about lab diagnosis. Don't think lab diagnosis is a very simple thing. It is a very, very tricky, very, very difficult thing. Okay. Most of the time they ask you regarding the lab diagnosis only. Okay. Now, when it comes to lab diagnosis, what is the thing you do? Let us say a patient came to you. Okay. He is telling three important complaints. Doctor, <laughs> doctor, I have a cough, very severe cough. Right, this kind of cough is productive cough. Productive cough in the sense he is having sputum outside. Okay. Second important thing, he is also telling. Uh, sometimes I have not sometimes every day I have fever also. Right. Apart from fever, I also have nighttime sweating. Okay. These three are very crucial complaints. If any patient is complaining to you that 
तो डॉक्टर आई हैव नाइट स्वेट्स आई हैव नाइट स्वेट्स आई हैव फीवर एंड आई हैव प्रोडक्टिव कॉफ प्रोडक्टिव कॉफ most of the time patient will tell doctor whenever i'm coughing even blood is also coming right so he will also tell about hemoptysis so guys from now onwards i'm telling you if you write these complaints at any cost okay if you are remembering this complaints if you are remembering if you have a good memory to remember these complaints i'm telling you most of the time this will be a tb patient okay now for such tb patient what will you do what will you do is that you will do an x ray fine you will do an x ray and see okay there is something that is abnormal here let us say x ray is normal x ray may you couldn't find anything okay if you couldn't find anything will you tell the patient okay come back when it is severe because i'm not finding anything in the x ray no what you need to do what you need to do is that you need to take you need to take most commonly you need to take a sputum sample you need to take a sputum sample how many is all of you know sputum sample right you tell the patient to give a sputum sample collect in a bottle now how many sputum samples you have to take you have to take more than 3 samples or at least 3 samples you have to take out if you are taking 3 samples out of these 3 3 samples one sample should be a morning sample okay ek sample morning ka hona chahiye one morning sample has to be there so out of these three sputum samples there should be one morning sample patient is telling doctor i am not getting any kind of sputum okay if you are not getting any kind of sputum now then what will you do you will induce the sputum in that patient how will you induce the sputum in that patient how will you induce the sputum in that patient you use you use isotonic or hypertonic saline hypertonic saline so now all of you know when you give saline to the patient isotonic or hypertonic saline to the patient obviously within the mouth the sputum production will be started okay now what you do you collect the sputum this kind of sputum is called as induced sputum what is this sputum called as this kind of sputum is called as induced sputum now patient is even after giving this isotonic or hypertonic saline solution also still within the patient mouth right the sputum is not produced then what you need to do what you need to do is that you need to put a pipe within his stomach and then do the lavage what is that called as gastric lavage gastric lavage okay if patient is telling no doctor i don't want any gastric lavage to be done right so it is regarding the lungs why are you checking my stomach if he is doing that if he is asking you like that then the next important thing you need to do is bronco alveolar lavage directly you put a tube into the bronchi and then you suck the uh, sputum you suck the secretions bronco alveolar lavage okay now finally you <coughs> i'm sorry now finally you have taken a bronco alveolar lavage now what will you do with this sputum sample will you store it in the fridge tell me you will take it to home what will you do anyone any idea finally i have taken a sputum sample now what will you do is that you will send this sputum sample to the lab and in the lab what are they going to do with your sputum sample they will do a specific test called as acid fast staining or afb staining or acid fast bacilli staining Uh, okay acid fast bacilli staining now within this acid fast bacilli staining what is the kind of stain they use they use a zn stain all of you know uh, zeal neeson staining all of you you remember that zeal neeson staining which i told you in the starting the in the staining methods everyone right so you use zeal neeson staining so if zeal neeson staining available nahi hai sir in office mein right in the lab it is not available then you use another stain called as oramine rhodamine stain oramine oramine rhodamine stain so this is also called as afb in your textbooks it will be afb you have taken the sputum sample and you have done afb sir why did you choose this test directly 
Why can't you go to PCR and all these things? Why? Because this test rapidly detects. Okay. This test very rapidly detects whether the patient is having TB or not. Rapidly, we can very fastly see within a sputum, there are mycobacterium tuberculi bacilli or not. Very fastly, we can look at that. And moreover, this test is inexpensive. It is not expensive. So that is the reason why we will start with this test. Now, if this test is positive, agar ye test positive, Nikla, then what you need to do? You need to confirm, right? You need to confirm. You need to show the proof. So how will you show the proof? You will do another test which is more uh, reliable, more confirmatory. That is called as NAT, CBNAT. Okay. What is this NAT? Nucleic acid amplification test. Nucleic acid amplification test. Okay. Nucleic acid amplification test. Now, even this test is also very rapid, but it is a little bit costlier. Okay. This test is also very rapidly detects, but it is a little bit costlier. Now, you have done finally, right? So your diagnosis is confirmed. So this is the diagnostic procedure which you do basically. Now, any disease you take guys, any disease, there should be something called as gold standard. Gold standard matlab, agar ye test kiya, and if this test is positive, then 110% this patient is having TB. We don't need any other test now. So such type of tests are called as gold standard test. So what is a gold standard test which we do over here? The gold standard test which we do is culture. Okay. How do you culture? Again, you take the sputum sample, send it for the culture. But a gold standard test, why are you not preferring in the starting? If this is this is a 100% test, this is a full surety test, why are you not preferring in the starting? Why are you doing all these tests? The reason is that this would take around two to six weeks to come. The results would take around two to six weeks to come because you take the sputum sample. You have to detect bacteria first. You have to grow the bacteria. For this bacteria to grow, it would take around two to six weeks. Everyone is clear? Till here, all of you understood? Jaldi batao. Arpina? Understood, Arbina. Very good. Karan, Karan, you understood? Right. Now, next important thing is that there are another group of patients. Now, this is a treatment procedure which we do for which kind of patients? Which for active TB patients. Active TB in the sense, let us say right now I have TB. Right. For example, I have TB. For me, these are the tests that are done. Okay. But, but. For example, let us say, let us say, patient already had TB previously. Now he is coming with the same complaints again. Now again, I'm suspecting the TB. So such group of patient is called as a previously treated TB case. Who is he? Where does he belong to? He is a previously treated TB case patient. Previously treated TB case patient. Second important thing is that there are some TB patients. These are called as MDR TB. MDR means multi-drug resistant TB. No matter whatever drug you give, right? Still that bacteria will not die. So that bacteria is called as multi-drug resistant tuberculosis bacteria. Mycobacterium tuberculosis, multi-drug resistant bacteria. So if I come in contact with such patient, okay? If I come in contact if I, I will tell you, no, I will let you know what are these points which I'm writing over here. So if you are coming in contact with multi-drug resistant TB patient, or let us say, let us say a patient is having HIV. Okay. A patient is having HIV infection. And now he's showing some symptoms of TB because, you know, HIV immune compromised. So definitely they will show symptoms of TB, right? So in these three group of patients, what is a TB test that you do? The test which I do is rapid molecular testing. Rapid molecular testing is the test which I do in these three categories. These three categories. Right. Till here, before I go to the x-rays and before I teach you the x-rays in detail, before I teach you all these x-rays in detail, till here all of you understood? Yes or no? Yeah? <laughs> Sorry. 
right all of you are understanding right very good so let us look at the x-rays now let us look at the x-rays we will discuss the x-rays of two groups of patient one group of patient who freshly came with tb this is called as primary tb another group of patient who already had tb completely cured and now again he came with tb this is called as a reactivated tb reactivation of tb okay so one group of patient is called as primary tb now all of you don't write anything just watch and look at the x-rays which i'm teaching you primary tb another group of patient is post primary tb post primary tb which you also call it as a reactivation which you also call it as a reactivation now in primary tb the first important finding which you see is consolidation 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 matlab kya in an x ray if you look at an ill defined borders if you look at ill defined borders ill defined borders that is called as consolidation all of you just look at this particular x ray over here now in this you just tell me this is your right lung this is the patient's left lung okay where do you think the pneumonia uh, sorry where do you think the consolidation is right lung or left lung but i want you to be actively participating in the class left lung all of you know now in the left lung you see something here right now this is not perfectly like a circle right this is not perfectly like any other shape this is not perfectly like a node or like a tumor or like a cancer or nothing like that this is ill defined look at the border the border is not clear right so such such things are called as ill defined borders you see such x ray here you call it as ill defined border okay so first important point which you need to know that in a tb case you would see what you would see the first important thing consolidation which means ill defined border clear all of you everyone is clear right what is the second important thing you see second important thing is this one now all of you know that in an x ray in an x ray in an x ray see this particular region is called as a hilum all of you know this right this particular region is called hilum now near the hilum we have got some lymph nodes called as hilar lymph nodes in tb especially only one side unilaterally the hilar lymph nodes will be enlarged now all of you just look at this particular x ray now you can very clearly figure it out where is the hilar region this is a hilar region now in this hilar region there are some swellings where is the swelling now don't tell this as a swelling no this is not a swelling that is the arch of iota which is coming down that is not a swelling okay now tell me where are the swellings here let me tell you this is a right and this is the left right right and left where is the swelling all of you can look at some swelling over here a white color swelling near the hilar region right yes or no so can i tell only one see on other side you don't have such swelling only at one side you have this swelling <coughs> so this is called as unilateral hilar lymphadenopathy what is this unilateral hilar lymphadenopathy so unilateral hilar lymphadenopathy is also seen in case of primary tb in case of primary tb clear all of you two important points one is consolidation another one is unilateral hilar lymphadenopathy coming to the third point what is the third point is that whenever the tb bacilli enters into your lungs it will go to a particular position in the lungs it will go to a particular place there it will settle down so exactly at that place you will see a small round white nodule like thing that is what is called as gons focus okay now all of you i'm zooming it here now here if you can very clearly see can you see a small white color round nodule over here all of you are clear with this right so this small right color round nodule is what is called as, is called as what gons focus this is called as gons focus all of you are clear with this yes or no 
gons focus now whenever i get a doubt of gons focus what will i do i will tell the patient see i find there is something a round thing here i think this might be called gons focus okay let us look it clearly for that i have to do another test for you that is called as hrct high resolution ct scan now in this high resolution ct scan i can very clearly see the gons focus here you see this gons focus right so this is what is called as your gons focus clear everyone now the last and the fourth important thing which you would see is pleural effusion that is pleural effusion guys very easy whenever you come across an x-ray of pleural effusion always see there will be a curve you see there is a curve like this there is a curve very fine curve very smooth curve whenever you see a smooth curve like this right it means there is a pleural effusion clear you see a smooth curve here then this is a pleural effusion there is a lot of fluid here okay then there is a pleural effusion so what are the four important things which you would see what are the four important things which you would see here guys the first important thing is consolidation second important thing is un unilateral hilar lymphadenopathy third important thing is <laughs> third important thing is gons focus fourth important thing is pleural effusion these are the four important points which you see in an x-ray till here everyone is clear yes or no everyone should answer me now everyone is clear now you will do the x-rays by yourself okay i will i will show you the x-rays you will tell me the answer now when it comes to when it comes to the post primary tb when it comes to the post primary tb or reactivation what you will see is that you will see a fibro caseous cavity you will see a fibro caseous cavity okay now all of you look here all of you look here let us, what is a fibro caseous cavity see this is how the cavity looks okay this is the lung border in the center what is there in the center this white color part is called as a cavity okay and this cavity is surrounded by a fibro caseous network it is surrounded by a very thick wall okay this cavity is same like a bottle cap you open a bottle cap you see this is a cavity surrounding this cavity what do you have you have got a very fibrous a very thick fibrous layer right or you also call it as a capsule or whatever it is okay just look at the uh, x-ray over here now all of you look at the x-ray now in this x-ray can you see this a white color wall in the center you see a cavity yes or no now still i am not clear if you are not clear what will we do we will do a hr ct scan in the hr ct scan like this you can very clearly see you see a very clear very clear fibro caseous cavity in the center this white black color thing is called as a cavity over here okay this black color thing is filled with cavity now where do you see this usually these are most commonly seen in the upper lobes ye dekho ye upper lobe of the lung hai na this is most commonly seen in the upper lobe this is the only finding which you need to know in case of post primary tb or reactivation tb okay now we are done with these x rays over here we are done with these x rays now another important the last important finding i will tell you and then we will jump on to the x rays what is the last important finding is that whenever you are taking a uh, chest ct scan right in a patient of primary tb primary tb in the sense a fresh case of tb what will you find is that you will see you will see this reaction this is a tree right this is a tree for example let us say right and let us say there are buds like this so this is a tree with small small flower buds so what is this appearance this appearance is called as tree in bud appearance what is this appearance tree in bud appearance or tree in bud pattern okay so where do you see this tree in bud appearance or tree in bud pattern here now all of you look at this all of you look at this i'm zooming inside i'm zooming inside here now can you see the same tree here same tree with the buds everyone tell me ye dekho aise hai picture tree with uh, white color buds over here 
white color buds like this? Yes or no? Are you guys finding it out? Comment, comment down. So that appearance is called as tree in bud appearance. What is this pattern called as? This is called, called as tree in bud appearance or tree in bud pattern. Okay, tree in bud pattern or tree in bud appearance. Clear all of you? So this was the thing I was telling you over here. Uh, fibrocaceous cavity, I told you, right? Fibrocaceous cavity, I told you, you remember? So this is the fibrocaceous cavity, which you can see over here. Okay, you see, this is a fibrocaceous cavity here. Clear everyone now? Guys, these are the x-rays which you have to know. Now, if you are clear with these x-rays, then I will go for the questions. Is everyone clear so far? Very good. Very good. Karan, you are clear. Nidhi, everyone is clear, right? Kajal, very good. Now, all of you, just, just look at these x-rays. Now, you will tell me the answer. Okay. Now you will tell me what is this first x-ray? First x-ray. I will ask you a few important things. First, is it a hilar lymphadenopathy or is it... Now, don't answer. Don't be in a hurry. Think and answer. Okay. Is it a hilar lymphadenopathy or is it a gons focus or is it a tree in bud appearance or is it a, uh, let us say, consolidation? What is this? What is this? You know, life is not easy. Whatever you think is not the answer. Karan Raj, Arbina Ali, very good. What did I tell you? Lymphadenopathy in the sense, it looks like a lymph node, rounded. Abhi ye first may, all of you are answering it as, all of you are answering it as, uh, uh, Hylar lymphadenopathy. Hylar lymphadenopathy yaha tak todi hoga. Ye corner tak todi hoga. Will it be till the corner? No, this is not hylar lymphadenopathy. You see the border here? The border is ill-defined. You see ill-defined border? Ill-defined border matlab consolidation. Kaha pe bhi ho, kai pe bhi ho sakta hai. It is not gaunt's focus also. Where can you see the points? You cannot see the points. It is not gaunt's focus also. Very clearly you see gaunt's focus is a very small point. Okay, very small point. So this is an X-ray of consolidation. Now look at the second X-ray and ye batao yaha pe kya hai? What is the problem here? Same. Gons focus, consolidation, hilar lymphadenopathy, tree in bud appearance. Batao kya hai ye? What is this? So, dekho, tree in bud appearance kaha pe dekhte ho? Where will you see tree in bud appearance? You will see only in HRCT. High resolution CT scan. In a normal x-ray, you won't see tree in bud appearance. Again, I'm telling you, hilar matlab sirf hilar region tak rahega. It will only be till the hilar region. It won't go till the periphery. If it is going till the periphery, it is consolidation. Ye dekho. It is going till the periphery. It is going till the periphery. This is consolidation. This is what? Consolidation. Kaha se plural effusion? Always remember. Always and always remember in plural effusion. Very important point I'm telling you. Plural effusion as a beach mein shuru nahi hoga. Plural effusion will not start in the middle. You see there is a dome here. This is called right hemi diaphragm. Or yaha pe bhi ek dome hai. Ye left hemi diaphragm. Hai. So this from here the curve will start. Okay. You won't see the right hemi diaphragm or the left hemi diaphragm. Wo hoga plural effusion. I will I will show you those x-rays also. Right. Now look at this x-ray and tell me ye kya hai. what is this? Who will tell me this? See, first what before answering, keep few things in mind. Plural effusion, nahi. plural effusion matlab, it starts from the domes. Down. Ye dekho, pe dome normal hai. This dome is normal. 
This dome is normal, so it is not pleural effusion. Okay. Next, hilar lymphadenopathy. It will not go till the periphery. Yahan pe periphery tak ja rahe ki nahi. It is going. Third important thing, gons focus ke kaise hoga? Chota sa hoga. Gons focus is very, very, very small. There is gons focus here? No. A uh, train but appearance that you can see only on HRCT. Ye HRCT nahi hai, X-ray hai. Then what is this? Abhi answer to bata diya mene. Consolidation. You see, ill-defined borders. Ill-defined borders matlab kya? Consolidation. Very good. Ill-defined border is consolidation. Okay. <laughs> right. Abhi ye batao guys. Now tell me this thing. What is this? Now is this white? I obviously I know you can see some white color thing over here. Is this going till periphery? Periphery matlab end tak ja rahe? No. It is not going till periphery. If it is not going till periphery, then what is this? What is this? Very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. So this is unilateral hilar lymph adenopathy. Now you understood. Now you understood how to differentiate between uh, consolidation and uh, unilateral hilar lymph adenopathy. Perfectly clear. Very good. Now look at this particular thing over here. Look at this particular X-ray and tell what is this again. What is this? This is another question here. What is this? Very good, Kajal Patel. Very good. This is hilar lymphadenopathy again. You see, hilar unilateral. Guys, bilateral hilar lymphadenopathy you will see in sarcoidosis. Okay. Sarcoidosis may dekte ho bilateral hilar lymphadenopathy. This is mostly in TB. You will see unilateral only. Okay. You see unilateral hilar lymphadenopathy. Very good. Now, here again, again, can you see a lymph node that is enlarged over here? Right. Again, can I tell this is unilateral hilar lymphadenopathy? Yeah. Unilateral hilar lymphadenopathy. Clear all of you? Now, all of you just look at this one clearly and tell me. Ye kya ho sakta hai? What can be this? Can you see here? This is also hilar lymphadenopathy. See? Here you see an enlargement. White color shadow. Like this. Hai na? But ye white color shadow end tak gaya? No. There is, it did not go till end. Then what will it be called as? Unilateral hilar lymphadenopathy. Are you clear guys? Actually, ye x -rays jo hai na, these are not digital x-rays. Now, where does digital x-rays have come? It is very easy to identify. Yeah, digital x-rays nahi hai na. These are all uh, uh, the x-rays which, which were used previously. So, all of you understood till here how to differentiate between uh, hilar lymphadenopathy and uh, consolidation. Perfectly clear. Everyone is perfectly clear. Very good. Everyone. Everyone I need. Arpina understood. Very good. Remaining. All of you are understanding. Very good. Now, now, uh, achha, ye batao ab. now, what is this? What is this? What is this X-ray over here? Very good, Karan Raj. Very good. You see a small focus over here? Very good. Very good, Arbina Ali. Very good. This is called Gons focus. This is called as your Gons. This is called as what? This is called as your Gons. Now, tell me what is this again? Here also you can see a small round thing over here. So can I tell this is also Gons? Very good. This is also Gons. Again, tell me what is this here? What is this here? Come on, Nidhi. Arbina, come on. Very good. Firse Gons, you see another Gons focus. Very good. Very good. Very good. Now look at this X-ray and tell what is this? I mean, what is this? <clears throat> Plural effusion. Plural effusion. Very good. What did I tell you in plural effusion? You have to look at the dome like this. Here they go left side dome. Hai. Very clearly you can see the dome. Very clearly you can see the left hemidiaphragm. But can you see the right hemidiaphragm? No. You cannot see right hemidiaphragm. Point number one. Or second point kya hai? Can you see a curve upwards? Plural effusion. Or here. You can see a hemidiaphragm here. But on the left side can you see it? No. 
Again, what is this? Left-sided plural effusion. Very good. Left-sided plural effusion. Now, diagnose and tell me what is this? See, here I can see hemidiaphragm. Hemidiaphragm. But can I see hemidiaphragm on the left side? No. Again, there is left-sided plural effusion. Left-sided plural effusion. Okay. Now, what is this appearance over here? Ye batao, ye kya ho sakta hai? What is this appearance? What is this appearance over here? What did I tell you? Very good. This is very good. This is tree in bud appearance. Very clearly you cannot see it. But somehow you can figure it out that this is tree in bud appearance. Okay. Tree in bud appearance. Yeah, dekho. Yahan pe baut clearly dekh sakte you see trees with many small multiple buds. Hai na? Ye miliarity bhi hai. So this is tree in bud appearance. Tree in bud appearance. All of you understood this? <coughs> Yeah, they go tree in bud appearance. Uh, this was a picture that is given along with that. Right? So don't worry, such clear x-rays only you'll get in the exam. This type of x-rays you won't get. Okay, very clear x-rays you will get in the exam. Okay. Now, guys, can I tell that this is a fibrocaceous cavity? Yeah, they go. This is a fibrocaceous cavity. Matlab, can I tell this is a secondary TB? Uh, secondary TB matlab, wahi, reactivated TB. Yes or no? Fibrocaceous cavity, where did we study? In post-primary TB. You remember post-primary TB? Very good. Very good. Guys, you are confident with the x-rays. Yes or no? These x-rays only will come in the exam. These matlab, yahan se uta ke dalenge. Matlab, these type of x-rays will come in the exam. So all of you are confident. You perfectly understood. Yes or no? Or 50-50 understood or 100% understood. Bato. Right. Very good. Very good. Very good. Okay. Remember one thing. X-rays will not be taught in microbiology. Any microbiology video you see on YouTube, no one will teach you X-rays. I have to integrate it clinically. So I have integrated it. Okay. This is how you have to study. Any topic, integrate it clinically. Integrate. This will cover up your respiratory part. This will cover up your internal medicine part. This will cover up your pathology part also. Okay. Now, before we close up for today, we will discuss one more topic over here. That is rickettsia. Coming to rickettsia, rickettsia is an obligate intracellular parasite. Okay. Obligate intracellular parasite. Okay. Now, if you remove this out of the cell, this will die. It needs cell. Without the cell, it can't survive. There are three different types of rickettsia. Very, very confusing. In this table, it is better to study in a single table. One is called as rickettsia rickettsi, rickettsia provazaki, rickettsia typhi. There are three important rickettsia. Okay, three important forms of rickettsia. Now, rickettsia rickettsi, what is the reservoir over here through which are you getting this infection? You are getting it through dog ticks. Dog ticks. Okay. Rickettsia provozaki is body louse. All of you know you have got head louse, right? Within the head. In the same way, there is also body louse. So, body louse, kaunsa body, kiska body? Human to human. If you, if for example, if let us say, if one of your partner is having body louse, if you touch him, hug him, kiss him, then what will happen? That body louse will come to you. Okay. Coming to this, these are fleas. You know, fleas, fleas. So it is because of the fleas. These are the reservoirs. Now, what are the characteristics which you can tell about this? The first important characteristic I can tell you is that this rickettsia is gram-negative organism. What is this? This is a gram-negative organism. So rickettsia is a gram-negative organism. And where can you see this? You can see this on Gimsa stain. You can see this on Gimsa stain. In the staining methods, we have discussed this point particularly. Okay, you can see this on Gimsa stain. Now, coming to the virulence factors, by now you know what are virulence factors. Virulence factors are the uh, bacterial weapons. Okay, now what is the virulence factor over here? The virulence factor is that, see, this, this particular organism is having on its surface, it is having an injection like this. Okay, it is having what? It is having an injection. Or ye injection ka naam hai, T4SS. 
Okay, what is this injection called as? This is called as T4SS. T4SS in the sense, T4SS, what is T4SS? Anyone, what is T4SS? What is this T4SS? T4SS stands for T4 secretory system. Okay, T4 secretory system. What do you mean by T4 secretory system? It is like an injection like this. Okay, what will happen is that this particular organism will go, it will go and land in one of the host cell like this. It will insert into the host cell and through this T4 secretory system, the genetic material or the toxins from this bacteria are transferred through this injection into the host cell. You're getting it? From this, it is transferred into the host cell and host cell will die. So that is called as T4 secretory system over here. Clear all of you? Second important thing is that there are also surface adhesion proteins. Surface adhesion proteins. What do you mean by surface adhesion proteins? For example, let us say this is a host cell. Yeah, host cell. Okay, this is a host cell. Here, yeah? let us say this is that virulent organism. This is that virulent organism. Okay, host cell and this is that virulent organism over here. Now, if this organism has to inject something, first of all, this organism, first of all, this organism should stabilize on the host cell. So, uske liye kya karega? This organism has got two legs like this. It is having two legs. These two legs are called as surface adhesion proteins. Okay. Now, once it has sat perfectly on the host cell, now what it will do? It will slowly remove its injection inside like this. It will slowly open its injection and slowly what is going to happen all the genetic material all the genetic material is slowly transferred into the host cell okay now what are these adhesion proteins over here these adhesion proteins are ompa ompb okay ompa and ompb these are the two important adhesion proteins fine so this is common for all these three this is common for all these three but what is the uncommon thing? What is the uncommon thing is that rickettsia rickettsi causes a fever called as Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever. Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever. Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever. Very, very important. Next, rickettsia provazaki. Rickettsia provazaki causes what? Spotted Fever. Causes Spotted Fever. Not only spotted fever, it will also cause epidemic typhus. Agar epidemic hai, there will also be endemic. The last one will cause endemic typhus. Endemic typhus. Epidemic, endemic matlab, simple thing to remember. Epidemic matlab, a disease which spreads very fastly. For example, COVID infection hai. COVID infection pehle se hai? No. COVID infection suddenly it spread all over the world. This is called as epidemic. Okay. If any infection is spreading suddenly, that is called epidemic. What is endemic? An infection which is already present. Manlo, Africa. In Africa, what is the infection that is already present there? Malaria. All of you know. So it means it is endemic there. You're getting it? You understood the difference between epidemic and endemic typhus? All of you understood this? Epidemic matlab, which spreads fastly. Endemic is already present there in a particular location from a long time. Okay, that is called as endemic. All of you are clear with this? But whatever it is, for all these three, three patients, the only drug which we give is doxycycline. We give doxycycline. Okay. Sir, doxycycline you cannot give in pregnant. So pregnant mein kya doge? In pregnant females, you can give chloramphenicol. Chloramphenicol, you give in pregnancy. You give in pregnancy. In pregnancy, you give what? You give chloramphenicol. <coughs> right. All of you understood this, guys? Everyone understood all these things which you have discussed now? Perfectly clear? Right? <laughs> Very good. So, uh, start learning these x-rays. So, how do you learn these x-rays is that 
type consolidation in the internet. Okay. So you will get consolidation x-rays. See one x-ray and another x-ray. Compare the differences. Look at the third x-ray, fourth x-ray. That is ovular. Don't look at single x-ray. Okay. You have to look at few x-rays. After that, uh, type, let us say, plural effusion. You will get x-rays. Watch at those x-rays. Sir, which is the best website to look at an x-ray? Very good x-ray, very perfect, very clear x-ray if you want any radiography. There is a website called Radiopedia. Okay. There is a website called as Radiopedia. Okay. So in this website, you will get a very good images. Okay. Directly patient profiles you will get here. Patient ka CT scan exactly you will be downloaded there. Okay. So very good uh, images you will get. And in fact, in fact, for your FMG exam also, directly the x-rays are taken up from this Radiopedia only. Many of the times. Okay. Because these x-rays are uh, copyright free to use and you can use it very easily. So all of you understood all the important things which I've taught you today. Yes or no? Pehle 30, pehle 50, pe 30, aaj 20, kal 10 aayenge shayad. Uske baad ek kaam kar lo. We will do a WhatsApp call. In the WhatsApp call only we'll start discussing the class, okay? Tomorrow I'll open the portal, right? If there aren't above 50 students, I will cancel the class. Ye baat bol do sab tu. Okay, tell all of your friends. I'll cancel the class. And when I cancel the class, the call will go to the management. Why did the faculty cancel the class? What is the reason? They will call me back. I will tell you no attendance. Then they will start searching the attendance. Waha pe shuru hoga problem. So that's what I'm telling you. Attend, attend and attend the classes. <clears throat> okay. Right. So this is all guys. All of you understood. Thank you so much for your patience. Goodbye. Take care and love you all.